Well, hello everybody, this is Captain Pete, and I'm going to let you in on my secret little private escape as to where I go to. It's, it's my great weakness, the Master of Orion 2. When I first saw the station all those years ago, I think it was 1980-something, I have to admit, I fell in complete love with the game right there. That's what I wanted to play. That was the pocket captain's experience, the idea of being able to escape into a game as the captain of a station and do amazing things like I'm seeing right here. And, you know, right now those those effects may seem kind of simple, but back then, ooh, that was pretty amazing stuff, and I was in love with what I saw. Just the atmosphere I saw, just the way it looked, made me feel like, ah, this is this is it, I've arrived. And then the tension rose. Here comes the interns. Of course, you never see anything quite that spectacular in the actual game. So it was a bit of a teaser, but still, it grabbed me. And I was hooked ever since. Oh, there he goes. He's, of course, toast. He's never going to do it. He's just a little fighter. But we'll watch out the video anyway, just because it's so much fun. Yeah, he never stood a chance. And of course, whoever did the opening video didn't know that interns go right through shields. See, I would have given up on the shields at that point and tried something else. Toast. Now, I have been playing this game for as long as I can remember. In fact, it's my little escape. I, as I said, it's something I do all the time. And you'd think at this point I would be some kind of a genius expert. But I'm not. I'm actually not the greatest play game player that ever was. I've played against some people who just blow me away time and time and time again. So if I keep losing, why do I keep playing? Well, I actually get immersed in the game. It's almost like I'm actually there. And as I said... Well, it isn't about stroking my ego. I'm not going to. I'm going to tell you that I am not the greatest player. There are other people on YouTube who will tell you how to do a brilliant job of advanced tactics, knowing when to attack and knowing when to obsequiously give in everything you've got. I've never been very good at that. I'm always more of a hard line. Uh, I, I don't give up anything if I don't have to, which is probably why I keep getting beat. And even the computer AI beats me, which is oh, so embarrassing. But, you know, I suck it up because I have a really good time. And if other people out there like playing games like Pocket Captains, or it's not Pixel Starships, I gotta tell you, this is the granddaddy of them all. This is the one to which all games are still yet compared. So I think it's important for anybody who loves to play a space game to get to know this one. So let me uh, take you through a little bit. And this is what it looks like when you first start the game. Tactical combat, of course I wanna control all the combat. Tutor? No, easy, too easy. Average, hard, impossible. Now, believe it or not, I usually play impossible, but I don't have played that often, and I usually customize my race. And I'm going to try not to do that today. I'm gonna to try to pick an average race. Let's make the universe a little larger. What do we have? We have clusters now. Huge! Well, you know what? Mm -hmm. That'll slow down how long it takes me to run into other people. So let's do that. Random events? Sure. And Tarns? Absolutely. You hear the, the speakers kind of quaving, that, 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 that little hiccup in the audio? It's been there since forever. Love it. There's nothing wrong with the game. That's just the way it is. I thought it was a disc back in the day. But there's no CD anymore. Now, if you want to get hold of this game yourself, absolutely. Good old games and um, as well as... Um, Steam has all the Master of Orion's, and I'll, I'll go to them later on. But to me, like I played Master of Orion 1, and I loved it. But to me, this is the game. It comes with various races. They're stock races. And if you look at the bottom, it tells you... Oh, sorry, let's go back to Alcari. It tells you a little something what they can do. Ship Defense plus 50, Artifacts, Homeworld, and Dictatorship. Now, if you want to know more about what these are, you can go into the Custom. And we'll pick the Alcari for a minute, just for a demonstration. And here's what all the different characteristics... And they have to balance out. So I could take picks. Say I take unified. Now minus six. I'm in the hole. 
I have to take something else to take something back. There, there's some minuses. 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 Now I'm in the plus. I can't start the game in the minuses. That would be cheating. I can start the game in the pluses. So let's get out of here. Normally I go in here, but if you want an explanation what each of these do, charismatic. Right click on it, and it'll tell you more about what's going on. Races which are extremely charismatic are quick to make allies and almost always talk themselves out of problems. That's very nice when you're learning how to play the game in a hostile universe, by the way. So, uh, what do we got up here? Growth. This is for population growth. How fast your people uh, expand, um, you know, is a bonus or a, a penalty. Food. Food is so important. I remember playing Master of Orion 1 and food wasn't an issue. And I started playing this. I get, kept losing over and over because I didn't appreciate the need to move food around my colonies. It's a little easier if you guys are making bonus food. Production. The ability to make things. You know, this is a busy game. Lots of people are doing a lot of things. And if you can't make your stuff fast enough, it doesn't matter how good your research is if you can't actually put it to use. But on the other hand, research. You could quickly find yourself technologically behind everybody else if you don't keep up with research, and they will um, will destroy you very quickly. Money. You can run out of money too. There's a lot of workarounds for this one, so don't be too quick to rush into that one. This is very simple. Ship defense, ship attack. Basically, bonuses and penalties to attack and defense. It's as simple as that. Uh, there's a... A scoring system to decide whether or not your ship's going to hit or your ship's going to avoid or your ship's going to uh, deflect an attack these are calculated in ground combat these 10 points can make a huge difference when you're fighting on the ground it's a very simple tally system they add them up and the higher your score is the more likely you're going to hit and do damage to the enemy guys spying extremely annoying they take all my best stuff and they kill my people so neglecting spying can be a problem government each of these are as different as day and night. Feudal. This is one of the hardest ones. Planets have a 20% morale penalty. Ship costs are cheaper. Uh, they have a res All research is reduced by 50%. That's a percentage, not a point. That's a devastating amount. They simulate capture populations at a rate of one of every eight turns. Well, whoopee do. Um... They instantly assimilate. In other words, they're so unhappy that if somebody else conquers them, they immediately switch sides. Sounds like fun. Dictatorships. Defensive agents get a 10% bonus. Planets suffer a minus 20% morale penalty. Unless they have a marine barracks. You'll see that a lot. And they assimilate at the same similar rate. This is standard. It's why it's zero. Basically, you're the dictator. You're in control. Everything's go roses. Democracy 7. Now, obviously, it's 7 because they think this is the most important. Defensive agents are penalized minus 10 due to the personal freedoms. Okay, so they're going to rob you more. You assimilate capture populations at a higher rate, which pretty much means you're just so lovable they can't resist you. Due to the free exchange of ideas, research boosted by 50%. And because of trade, revenue is boosted by 50%. And they're prohibited from annihilating copy population. Okay, not the end of the world. That's actually pretty sweet, but for seven points, it's pretty expensive. Unified. That's my personal favorite. Defensive agents receive a fifth, plus 15% bonus because you have no traders. They're basically a, a single hive mind. They all think alike. They think like you do. That's the nice thing about being the king. All morale effects of any buildings, not applied. So you can have a morale penalty. You can also have morale bonuses. If you add bonuses, everybody does everything by 10% better, 20% better, 30% better, that these guys don't get. Um, they are extremely slow to assimilate. That's because other governments don't have the hive mind, so they resist. They get a productivity bonus of 50%. Imagine that to all production. And a productivity bonus of 50% to food production. Holy macro. When you get into percentages beats points every time I, I definitely go big and these are some of the little that's basically your people here's some of the nice bonus stuff low g worlds they're effective on a low g world but uh, there aren't that many low g worlds so you might want to hesitate to take this one high g world that's your normal world but you take a penalty on low and ordinary g worlds like gravity worlds don't rush into that one either um aquatic well, you treat uh, ocean worlds as if they're Terran. There's nothing more complicated than that. Subterranean. 
That's a beautiful one. You basically double your population size because you live on the ground and under the ground. Large home world, you get more people on it. Rich home world, more productivity because of the ores, plentiful. Poor home world, please don't do this. I know it's one point, it sounds like it's cheap, but the slowdown you get, you use your home world more than any other world, make sure it's producing for you. Artifacts world, that's your science boost. Cybernetic, half food intake, but you also use half your productivity to feed your people because they are basically Borg. So they're gonna need some of that productivity as food. Lithovores eat rock, which is really nice when you're dealing with food, but look at the cost, 10 points, wow. Repulsive, basically it's a nice minus six bonus. I mean, it allows you to take more pluses, knowing that you have this minus six to offset them, but oh, nobody will deal with you, which means you can't talk your way out of problems. That's a problem. Charismatic is the opposite. You could talk your way out of most anything. Well, within limits. Uncreative. If you pick that, you're not choosing your research. It's picked for you. It's random. This can be pretty scary. We might try that one later. Creative. You don't have to pick your research at all. You get everything, but it's expensive. Tolerant. No radiation, no pollution, no problem. You treat the world like it's tearing again. 10, whew, expensive, fantastic traders. You get bonuses for all your trades. Telepathic, you can in fact get a bonus for spying. And if you're orbiting a world with a ship that's at least a cruiser or larger, you don't have to invade it. You mind control it. So it makes conquering worlds really fast. Six points, I've always wanted to incorporate this in some way because it's just sweet bonuses, but I never found a good way in balancing everything else. Lucky? Well, there's random events in the game and usually you come out on the plus side. Omniscient? You can see the whole map. Stealthy ships? You're invisible automatically. You don't have to put technology on your ships and they can't see you coming. That's very good for PvP. Transdimensional? Well, sometimes you get a hyperspace flux in the game that stops your ships from moving through hyperspace. In other words, they're stuck on their planets. But transdimensional beings don't have that problem. Warlords. Well, that's basically double your ships. You can double the ships up. And you can train your crews to a higher level than anybody else. So that's the run flee the rundown of what these different stats do. We'll get into this stuff a little more later. But for now, let's play a little bit. Because time's a slipping away. So let's go back one level. And let's play a standard game. And let's play, you know, if you're starting out you mean, you can't go too far with the clock cons because they are unified. Plus, they get an extra bonus on food, an extra bonus on industrial, large home world. They really move it, and they really produce quickly, and they get the numbers up. And numbers are important, but they are dumb as a bag of hammers. So, they can't pick their research. And unless you're really comfortable with the game, knowing how to apply the random research you get, and some of it's pretty clunky, you got to somehow still make an effective force out of that. So this is kind of a thing for more experienced players. Humans though, simple, charismatic, which means you can negotiate better, and democracy, better research, better bonus for, for your finances. So let's try that. Now, I am not going to promise you I'm gonna win this game. I'm gonna call myself, let's see, something nice and surprising like Captain Pete, how about that? No promises. We're just gonna plunge in, see what we do. Let's choose something federation -y, blue. Let's go in, place in my home world. The maps are always different. The layout's always different. Now, for me to keep my world straight, I like to alph alphabetize. A1 is Saul, my home world. And there it is down there in the corner. Already I could see some, you're challenged if you can't reach to other worlds very easily, but on the other hand, you kind of get a defense for a little while. They leave you alone. You're not gonna run up against somebody right away. First thing I do, explore. Don't send your colony ships out there because if there's a monster on that world or a dragon or something horrible, that's the end of your colony ship. There, now, because the world may not be great when you first explore, let's look at your own solar system and see what the potential is. Poor. Yeah, I may not rush to colonize that with my colony ship. Then after I've set that up and I've sent my people out, next thing to do is set the research. My go-to when I'm starting any new game, hydroponic farm. Why do I want to start with a hydroponic farm? Well, let's look over here. Go to my colonies next. This is what all my people are doing. I got four people farming 
two working, two doing research. And if you look down here at my food, I'm at net zero. That's perfect. But on the other hand, half my population is producing food for the other half. Wouldn't I love to have the productivity or the research of these guys? You bet I would. Let's boost up my research a little bit. Let's see if we can get the hydroponic farm. Hydroponic farm gives me two food per colony that builds it. That's two guys that's not doing this job. I want that. I love it. So I find that frequently I need a freighter fleet right off the bat. I need to move my people around a little bit. Or if I end up with a truly craptacular world, I may want to move some food there. And you need freighters to do that. So they can transport five food or one population per turn. So let's start with at least that. It's a good beginner one. Ugh, 17 turns, but we'll see. I may move my guys around as I move along. Now, game settings. We'll go into this. Actually, let's turn the music down a little bit. I love the music. I don't want to turn it off, but I'd rather hear the sound effects when it's, you know, I love a good battle. No. no. Okay. And end of turn wait. Excellent. That's what I want. I don't want to. No, 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 no. Ship initiative. Yeah, why not? That basically says if you're small and you've got a better engine, you should go first. I, I agree with that. That just feels realish. But end of turn wait means if I hit the turn button, nothing's happened here. You see that? But if I don't have that on, he'll just basically rush to the planet. It'll rush through my turns until something's happened. But I may want to stop and reconsider how crazy I am to do X, Y, and Z. Now, right now, I'm not worried about that. So let's hit turn. We've arrived at, oh, craptacular world. It's toxic and abundant. Well, if you right click on this, you'll see that four people, food, no food in a toxic world, industry three, research per scientist three, but a maintenance penalty of 50%. That's pretty devastating. So I've already come up against a really tough choice. Do I send my colony ship to this really, really bad world? No, not if I can avoid it. I really want to know what those other worlds look like, but I think they're out of range. So now I have two choices. I'm faced with the prospect of building, uh, to get a more fuel range, I could go all in on deuterium. The fuel cells gives me extra range. Or I could go over here. Instead of building that, I could try building an outpost ship, which I could then drop. Let's see, freighter fleet is seven, uh, 17, 34. Yeah, it's twice the, but I may have to do it because I think that's more important than freighters right now. I'll keep building hydroponics and I will have to switch back. So let's just put ahead here. I'm wasting a colony ship though. And that's not fun either. Oh, should I drop it on there? Because I've got a whole ship doing nothing. That's a reduced productivity. Time to take to replace it. Versus how long it'll take me to get to where I'm going. 30 turns. Oh, tough decisions, tough decisions. Let's get the hydroponics researched. Built. And then we'll see what the impact is going to be on building that other ship. Oh, well, thank you. Every now and again, somebody will offer to join you. Now, you notice this is going up. I could increase my tax rate if I want to, but I don't want to. The more you increase this, not only does it, uh, it does bring in more money, more money, but it has a, a cost of reducing the effectiveness on your construction. I guess your people aren't as happy. So for every percentage you add to your tax income, you add that same percentage to reduction in your building speed. So there we have hydroponics, sweetness, Deuterium, absolutely. I have no choice. I don't want to. I really want his research lab. That's 150. And that would speed up all my research, which is less than 250. Yeah. Research lab, 15 turns. Now let's take those points I was putting in that. Now you can take those points and transfer them by dragging this up there. 12 turns. Don't think so. I need those points. Six turns. Sounds a little better. Maybe I should go ahead and buy it. I mean, it's not like I'm not making money here. And I could really use that productivity. There. Back to a colony ship. Hmm. Outpost ship at 16. We have a bonus of two food. Each of these farmers, by the way, on this particular world is making two food. That's more research I'm doing. Love that research. 
Ooh, weaponry, navigator. No, I don't have the 200. 11. Not a lot going on here. It'd be nice if I could have a population boost. Up, oh, somebody just came along and started a population boost. He's arrived to farm. He's using one of the food, plus he's created surplus food. That outpost ship is in 11 turns. I don't know that I'm ever going to rush to take that world as a colony. So it may not be a bad idea to put an outpost on there anyway, even if I get deuterium. Eight. Yeah, I'm kind of desperate to get that colony ship moving, so I'm going to buy it. Don't rush to buy everything, but sometimes when you're up against it, strategically, it may be the best thing to do. We know that world's pretty safe, so I can send the fleet up there. One and two. Be careful who I pick. Planet for the outpost ship, not the colony. Okay. Do I want to put a colony ship on? No, that would be big. I would have to start all over again. I'd be so upset. So now I'd send my freighters out, or my, my frigates out, sorry. My little scout ships, which are equipped with sad, pitiful little lasers. Well, yeah, we're going to need deuterium. We're not getting very far on this. Click. And go. One. Oh, it's exciting. What are we going to run across here? Two. Three. And nothing killed me. That's nice. Poor and poor with a stable wormhole. Well, we have to know it's up there. Rich. Well, I'll take rich all day long. Although there's two of these. They are both poor. So it's good for numbers. Love the numbers. Ramo, though, unfortunately, is a small world. But it's a rich world, and I could really use the productivity boost. So we'll put him here. We'll send this lad over to see what's peaking. I don't really want to go over there, all the way over here and build a colony or anything out there, even if it's a nice world, because I can't support it with my home. Research Slabs. For the moment, I'll sit on deuterium for a minute. Let's see if I can get up. What I want to do is look up here in construction. There's always a tough choice here between missile bases, which is if you get a missile base early in the game, basically you're, all your worlds are defended. There's no doubt about that. But the choice between that and automated factories is just too painful. You need those automated factories to get anywhere. So to get there, fighter bays, well, they're about as effective as a point defense, uh, any point defense beam weapon you have. Anti-missile rockets can shoot down rockets. That's okay. But I, for my money... It's all about the reinforced hull. Things will attack my stations, my ships, my everything. So that's what I'm going to go for. Reinforced hull. Just makes my ships and stations last two. That's nice. 200. Science leader plus 30%. Researcher plus 15. Now I'm hitting rejected. It doesn't mean he's gone. And over. Oh, good. It's a terrible world at Schwann. I don't feel bad, and it makes it less likely somebody else is going to colonize it and have a path to my system. Now look over here at the leaders. See, he's still here. And there's the other two guys I got rid of. In fact, if I get rid of these, here's a pro tip. You can get rid of these guys by right-clicking. Sorry, dismiss. Him? Yes! The more space there is... The greater the chance somebody will join you, and I don't, I'm not interested in either of these guys. They're okay. They're not great. Him, I'm keeping. I want him. So I got to get to the 200 points I need as soon as I possibly can. It's going to take a while. Here we come, Ramo. So, there's my second world. Not bad. Normal G2. Okay. So delete. This is A2 mine. It's basically a mine. It's all it's good for. High productivity. No farming. But I really need that productivity. Hydroponics and research lab. You bet. Oh, did I have research lab? Forget to put it on my one world. Bet I did. Well, we built the freighter fleet. That's a good thing. Now my guy won't starve. Research lab. I'm going to have to start switching this home world into colony ship construction, I think. What I really want to do is get some help out there to him for my home world. But anyways, let's go up here. Part of the secret of this game is explore. 
got to get to know what's out there. You've got to strategically choose which world gets which attention. If I didn't need the research lab so badly, I would be making another freighter to get some more people on this rich world to get it built up to build uh, colony ships. But, if wishes were fishes... Up, ah, here's another guy popped in. <gasps> Ooh, abundant swamp. That's my food world. Secchi, and it's nice. It's off to the side, so nobody's going to bother it for a while. And who's making colonies? Well, nobody. So, I'm thinking your colony ship production now. And you may have to make your own freighters when the time comes. I'm going to kind of need that colony ship sooner than later. It's not worth it. Now, you see how it, what I did here? I'm always testing. I gained a point. Uh, I, I lost uh, one turn. But look what it did to my pollution. I'm gaining. See the pollution at the bottom down here? Look down at the bottom when I take a guy away. Most of that extra boost to productivity went into pollution. And now, instead of doing using that productivity, he's using it to clean up the pollution, which is not what I want at all. Now, I could go ahead and buy that research lab. But I really, really, really want that science bonus. So, we're going to sit on that until we get our 200. Poor, but look at the size of it. Numbers are important because that's every guy I can have extra going into research is more... You know, the faster I'm going to get these researches done. Mind you, again, I'm human, so I'm going to get a little bit of a research bonus. Doesn't hurt break my heart. I really want that guy for 200. Come on, don't tease me, don't tease me. There we go. Reinforced hall. With automated factories, we're going to be building. Let's see if we can get the automated factory before we quit for tonight. Research lab. One turn. Let's get a real boost here. Watch the points go up. It's exciting. 23. Oh, I like him too. Ship. This is great for attacking worlds. Not easy a good combat guy, but... Oh, Commando. I'm not going to get him yet. He'll just have to wait. I've got another guy in the queue I'm waiting for. I want more. Research, research, research. Colony ship 83. 71. Yes, I added to the pollution thing, but the drop from 83 to 71 makes it worthwhile. Even though it means it's going to be a little longer. Mm -hmm. Automated factories. That's a tough one. If I keep them back there, I can get the automated factories sooner. It might actually make up the difference for that drop. So let's do that. Let me think. Is there a morale problem on this? I don't think I have morale issues. Maybe. Maybe, maybe I can get a boost for morale. In fact, I think I can. Might actually be worth it for these guys to build me a marine barracks and boost their morale before they build the research lab. 20%, and it's 20% for research, bar uh, for a marine barracks. Might get them farm, well, there's no farming, but it might make them build and research 20% quicker. We'll see. I, mean, I think the Marine Barracks just takes away the research, or the 20% the, the, the penalty. I don't think it adds. Yeah, I don't think it'll add. I think it just takes away the penalty. Yeah. Eliminates morale penalties for dictatorships and feudal governments. Yeah, that's not something I need right now. Let's just delete that. On to research. Wrong kind of government. See, I make mistakes. It happens. Hey, look, the freighters are free and I can transport some people. And while I hate to do it, this is a rich world and I do want to get them up off their f on their feet and moving faster. So it's worth it for me. And I got a bonus to four. I got a bonus of two. Oh, not enough freighters for that. One. Two. Almost there. Three. We have an automated factory. You look at the design. I mean, again, remember this is the 80s? That's a pretty good design. This whole screen is a pretty good design. I have no idea what he's saying, but... Generates five free production per world and plus one per worker. You cannot turn that down. The next decision, I always stop and think here. What should be the best decision for me here? Deuterium. 
scanner, if I go up this one, I can get a hollow simulator or a planetary supercomputer. Hollow simulator increases the morale on the planet by 20%. It means everything across the board is up by 20%. But a supercomputer, 10 bonus research points, and each scientist does plus two. Tough decision. I really hate the idea. Like this actually is a 20, this would actually be a 20% bonus to research points as well. Versus 10 and 2. That's always a difficult one. Uh, I'll have to think about that one. Um, cloning center could be very nice right now. Um, 100,000 plus bonus to the reproduction rate to a planet. Or soil enrichment which really, really reduces... Oh, that's my alarm. Telling me that's the end of the game tonight. So while I'm musing over this, um, research, fuel, or soil. I'm not in trouble for soil. Research, oh, I could really use that. I could also go up the construction tree for robo miners. That's a long way away. I think this early in the game, we're going to go with deuterium and get a better spread on our exploration. So I think that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, we'll come back again and we'll see what we could possibly reach when we get to these other worlds. But for now, we've got to start uh, with two worlds. Not ideal, but we're going to start. We started that colony ship and we will start another one. Oh, first of all, let's put our automated factories to work. Watch the change begin. Research lab in 12? No, I don't think so. Automated factory, please. There, don't want to forget that. So we're going to leave that for tonight. We'll pick up again another night, and we'll see how far we can expand our empire before somebody discovers us. Until then, remember everybody, have a little bit of fun every day, and find us at pocketcaptains.com. Thank you very much, and good night. Get more tips at pocketcaptains.com.